Hello everyone, so this time I'm back again with more of my MRCOG part 2 notes um, and I've got the green top guideline, sickle cell disease and the one on thalassemia for you. So, sickle cell disease is an autosomal recessive condition. Um, it's prevalent in the Sub-Saharan Africa and the Middle East. Um, the actual sickle cell disease is HBSS. AS is the carrier. It's a most common inherited condition. There's about 100 to 200 pregnancies a year in the UK. 12,000 to 15,000 affected individuals. The life expectancy is about mid-50s. Folic acid, 5 milligrams should be given preconception and should be carried um, throughout the pregnancy. Um, hydroxycarbamide should be stopped three months before conception. Penicillin prophylaxis should be given. Um, avoid dehydration, overexertion or raised temperature. Aspirin, 75 milligrams should be given once daily. Low molecular weight heparin only for antenatal hospital admissions. And MSUs should be sent monthly. So a scan should be offered at 7 to 9 weeks and then 11 to 14 weeks followed by a 20 week scan followed by every 4 weeks from 24 weeks. Pethidin should be avoided as it increases the risk of seizures, painful crisis at 27, 27 to 50% of pregnancies, NSAIDs should be used between 12 and 28 weeks, um, fluid 60 mg per kilo per 24 hours and oxygen sats should be maintained at over 95%. Induction and elective C-section should be arranged for after 38 weeks and there should be continuous electric, uh, electronic fetal monitoring in labour as there's increased risk of fetal distress. So postpartum, low molecular weight heparin should be given for seven days or six weeks if they've had a C-section. Progesterone uh, contraception like the pill injection of the myrena could be used. Estrogen is second line. Um, the flu vaccine can be given, the hep B, pneumococcal vaccine, haemophilus influenza B and the conjugated meningococcal C. Um, chronic conditions like pulmonary hypertension, so an echo could be requested, retinal screening, retinal antibody testing, renal and liver function. BP and urine dip, iron overload, so T2 cardiac scanning should be done. So that was the sickle cell anemia green top guideline and those were my summary notes on it. Um, I'm just going to go through the thalassemia guideline for you next. Right, for thalassemia, again, it is an autosomal recessive condition. Um, for major, there is defective beta globin genes from each parent. Severe um, transfusion-dependent anemia um, happens. For the trait, uh, mild to moderate microcytic anemia and no detrimental effects. Blood transfusion and iron chelation therapy is required. Iron overload can affect the, hip, uh, the, the liver, um, the heart, and the endocrine system, 50% of cardiac failure is the, um, the cause of death. Um, diabetes, uh, mellitus, hypothyroidism, hypoparathyroidism and subfertility can all be as a result of the iron overload. Um, there's no contraindications to the combined pill, um, the POP, um, the implant, the myrena. Desferoxamine can be used um, in the second and third trimester, should be avoided in the first trimester. Fructosamine levels of less than 30 millimoles, sorry, less than 300 millimoles per litre, which is the equivalent of HbA1c of 43, um, should be aimed for th three months prior to conception. Folic acid 5 milligrams should be given um, three months prior to conception as well. And vitamin D should be given to prevent um, osteoporosis in these patients. So antenatally, monthly assessments required until 28 weeks, two weekly after 28 weeks, monthly fructosamine levels and a cardiac assessment at 28 weeks. TFTs should be done to check for hypothyroidism. Scans should be done at 7 to 9 weeks, 11 to 14, 20 week and then every 4 weeks from 24 weeks and aim for a HB of 100 grams per litre. So this is quite an important bit. So the platelets are over 600 um, or they've had aspirinectomy um, then they just have aspirin. If the platelets are over 600 and they've had aspirinectomy, they get aspirin 75 milligrams and low molecular weight heparin. Desferoxamine is for 
iron um, collation and is safe in breastfeeding, low molecular weight heparin should be given for seven days post-discharge or six weeks after a section. Thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe to my channel and like this video if you found this useful. As I said, these are just my MRCOG part two notes, which I'm sharing uh, with you all, which I have come come to this um, after having read the guidelines over and over again um, but by all means do refer to the guideline um, itself to um, to get the original script um, um, thank you very much for listening